Right. Uh, today we want to talk about the systems development life cycle. The systems development life cycle. Right. As you can see, they um, we're not talking about the system development life cycle. We should always go back to what is a system, where we say the system is a group of interrelated components that come together to achieve a common goal. So when you're looking at the system development life cycle, what goal do you intend to achieve? What system do you, intend, do you intend to change? Right. Looking at this um, diagram there, with what we call the business needs and strategies, right there at the top, business needs and strategies. Right. Within the business needs and strategies, right, we are saying for you to understand or for you to come up with a, uh, a system development life cycle that is proper. You need to understand what are the business needs? What does your organization need at that moment in time? And what is your strategy of achieving this need? So that's how you understand the business needs and strategies. Right, from understanding the business needs and strategies, for example, right, a certain organization might want to increase shareholder wealth, right? There are many ways of increasing shareholder wealth. You can reduce your costs, your expenses, right? You can increase your market share, right? You can um, overprice your goods, depending on where the customers are going to buy them, right? All those are ways of increasing shareholder wealth. But you need to strategize on how you are going to achieve those needs. If you are going to increase shareholder wealth through increase of market share, what do you need? You need guys from research and development. You need guys in marketing to go and market your product, to go and market your, you to go and market your, your organization in terms of getting new, new clients for you. Right. So that is where it all starts. The overall organization is a system. We want to combine everything that is within the system so that it achieves the common goal of increasing shareholder wealth. In these circumstances, using this diagram, right, we have there, we have uh, probably an in-house developed product and a commercial package. So let's take for example, our strategy or our need is to be more efficient as an organization or in the department of accounting, in the accounts department and finance department, we need to be more efficient in terms of how we report. We need to be more efficient in terms of how we, we come up with, uh, uh, with the decisions. So what do we need? We need to first understand what is the business need? What is the business strategy? And do we even have the requirements to associate our needs and strategies? Then we look here, we have the legacy situation. What is our legacy as, a, as an organization? What is the situation of our legacy as an organization? That's what we need to look into. Understanding our legacy is we are understanding where we are coming from as an organization and where we are going as an organization. So which means we understand our vision, we understand our mission, we understand where we started. So now we are going to combine that with the system interfaces, the architecture and the user requirements together with the business requirements. So when we come to stage number one, which is, which is the system strategy. In the system strategy, the system development life cycle committee, it assesses, it develops a strategic plan. In the assessment, we are assessing whether we are going to achieve our needs and strategies, looking at the requirements of the business, combining with the interfaces that we have as an organization. Do we have the required architecture? Do we have the computers possibly? Do you have the servers? Do you have the manpower? Do you have the know-how? All that is part of assessment. We are assessing and we come up with a strategic plan on whether we can achieve the systems development life cycle or whether we can achieve the satisfaction of the business needs that we need to, that we are going to satisfy with the new systems development life cycle. Then when we have finished assessment, we take on our most favorable plan to stage two, the project initiation. 
where we are going to measure how feasible is it is. We're going to analyze the information with them. We're going to come up with a design, a conceptual design, and we're going to do what we call a cost-benefit analysis. In feasibility, there are a whole lot of things that we look at, into. Is it economic? Is it, does it have the technical know-how? How about in terms of regulation, legalities, law, right? Then we go on to analyze whether it is going to satisfy our business needs and strategies, the new system that we had to come up with. I've given an example that we had to move from a manual system going to a computerized system, right? So is it feasible to move from a manual system going to a computerized system? Is it, is it uh, the, the analysis, the results that we have from the analysis, is it feasible, right? What is the cost? What is the benefit? We are moving from a manual system where we record on manual journals, manual ledgers, then we go to a computerized system where we are going to input our information into a computer and the computer does the rest for us. All that is coming from where the legacy situation, the business needs and strategies. Then there at number two, if we want to go further, we have to decide on whether do we need an in-house product or do we need a commercial package. An in-house product, a product that is going to be constructed and delivered in-house by our IT department, whereby the IT department understands the needs of the organization. The IPT department needs the strategies that we need to achieve with. So they are going to construct a package that is user ready for us and deliver to us. Then, oral, we go for the commercial package. We just go on the shelf of, we pick a package. For example, we go and pick uh, QuickBooks or we go and pick um, uh, Sage Evolution, right? All those are packages that's off the shelf that can be configured to our needs and then that, then, then, then that can be tested and then they can be rolled out for our use. So we need to decide according to what we have seen, what is feasible, what is the cost benefit. So do we need an in-house or do we need a commercial package? Then on stage five, we have, we have decided on which package we, have, we want. So what do we do? We come up with maintenance and support. We need to support our in-house package, right? You see the, 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 the guys in, our, in IT, they are there for the support. Top guys in accounts, they are there to support the guys at the shop floor, the cashiers, right? The, 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 the assistants, right? So at that stage, again, that's where you see people that are not versed with the new system or the system that we have developed or that we have introduced, right? They go for enhance, enhancements, right? They go for training. They, they are taught how to, to address the system. They are taught how to navigate through the system. Then, at the same time, in maintenance and support, the guys in audit, they are going to be in charge of risk management. They are going to implement or improve the internal control systems of whether it is an in-house package or a commercial package. This is the final stage. We are saying we have implemented the, 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 the package. So now, after implementation, what do we do? We now see whether the package or worked well for us. So we go back to stage two, right? Where we are going to improve the system if the improvements are there. Why is the system is working? Or if the system totally fails, we are going back to stage one, where we try again to understand our organization, understand our legacy situation. So which means we totally need a, a new system altogether. Thank you.